All right, Doc. Another good one here. Uh, hi, we really appreciate uh, appreciate Dr. Ren. I don't. I shouldn't be reading these, man. I, I, you know, no, it's nice reading. that you read. I, I appreciate it. Uh, uh, well done for getting him on your channel. This is thanking you. So, uh, <laughs> well, but still, I'm nothing without you, Doc. So, yeah. it's a good teamwork. I feel like doing the old, you know, look down and kick my my <laughs> foot on the sand. Anyway, thanks. Uh, has Dr. Rand heard of the practice of drawing both HCG and testosterone into the same syringe and injecting it one go? In one go, I guess. He's, yeah. he's English. Yeah. I saw a Dr. Nelson Virgil, who was on TRT, do exactly that. He went on to say that the two substances won't mix on the syringes. One is water-based, HCG, and the other oil-based, so they will remain separated. He then used a small insulin needle and injected intramuscularly into his shoulder, optional. This way, those who use ACG and T multiple times a week can significantly reduce the amount of weekly ACG and T injections. Also, what does the doctor think of injecting intramuscular versus subcutaneously for ACG and testosterone? Big thanks from the UK, Kiri. So, uh, first of all, Nelson Virgil, I love him, uh, good guy. Want, definitely uh, has a great forum, Excel Mail, uh, where a lot of these things can be bandied about. And, uh, you know, you don't just hear from a doctor. You can hear from people that, uh, you know, have done it through trial and error, which is great because, um, you know, we're not going to have a whole lot of studies like this sponsored by the AMA in this country, <laughs> right? And, uh, again, I don't mean to be pejorative toward the AMA. It's just, you know, that that's not their focus. So... Uh, as, in my opinion, as long as you don't extrapolate, meaning you don't say, okay, well, this went well, and then you extrapolate based upon a, what I call a made up or gym science physiologic reason as to why it worked well and say, okay, then we can apply that to this substance. That's where you get into trouble. But a lot of times in the gym, people will try something and go, wow, that combination worked out great. And as long as it's not harmful, we just learned something, right? Right. Um, as far as Mixing the two substances, uh, in, in my opinion, you never want to mix an aqueous, a water-based substance with an oil-based substance. It has worked before, but just because it works nine times doesn't mean it'll work the tenth time. What I find most often, because here's the thing people would do a lot. Instead of HCG, they say, well, let me throw a little bit of, of B12 in there when I do my once-a-week injection of, of tea. That makes sense because both are, you know, if you do one cc, uh, you know, a thousand mics of B12, you're going to be above normal for the entire week until you do your next injection, mm -hmm. most likely. But what I see happen every once in a while is your body will, will wall off that combination. I don't know why, but because you've got, you know, oil and water, you know, it, it just doesn't mix well. So Oftentimes you can get a mouse, I call it, you know, a, a lump there, mm. uh, which can lead to, to more and more problems. So, um, you know, I, I, uh, I'm not sure, uh, I haven't talked to, to Nelson about, about this, and I'm not sure if I'm reading this properly as Nelson saying to go ahead and do that or not. But, um, you know, my, my advice would be to separate the two. Now, you can make it easy if you're doing multiple injections, by just what uh, it looks like he is, is saying, which you can use an insulin needle to inject either intramuscularly, right? You can, you can use a, an insulin needle that's 31 gauge, 5 16 and instead of putting it underneath the skin and leaving a little bleb, and, and you know, if you're using a, you know, a B complex, leaving like an orange stain underneath there for 24 to 48 hours, you can just throw it over here into your shoulder into the muscle. It works just as well. Works just as well, okay. or, or you could argue better. You know, because it's picking up the blood vessels mm -hmm. and into the capillaries right away. Uh, but that's fine. As far as the um, intramuscular use, use of T, that's the preferred method in my experience. The sub-QT thing has been going around the block now for a couple of years. I didn't even know you could do that. We have some studies. Studies. We have some information. I'll leave it at that. That, uh, you know, works well. I have patients that come in and say... Hey, Doc, uh, you know, I started trying this. Uh, what do you think? And I ask him, well, what do you think? How's it working for you? The idea behind it is that you're going to have a slower absorption, 
-hmm. The same reason I just mentioned with ACG, because yeah. you, your fat is not as well vascularized. So you're going to have a slower absorption and fewer peaks and troughs throughout your your uh, period between injections, so, more so to speak. More sustained release, sort of. Well, yeah, and what I really mean is versus a once-a-week intramuscular injection where you're going to have a peak and a trough, yeah, right, yeah. which we all know about. But I use the example, okay, for, with men particularly, you know, we're trying to maintain a 20-foot wall of water, if you will, yeah. and you inject, and I'm oversimplifying it, obviously, but, you know, then you have a, a three-foot wave on top of that. Most people don't notice that. And while the numbers may change significantly, so it's really more like a eight or 10 foot wall of water, you don't feel any different, okay? And we can maintain your levels of the bad stuff, the excess estrogen, without having to worry about it. To me, the idea of throwing in a small amount of an esterified form of testosterone, which is, why do we have that? The time release factor and the benefit of only having to inject once a week yeah. is, pardon the expression, bass backwards. If you want to do something daily, well, then just why don't you just do the cream? Right. You know, do it do it that way. The whole idea to, to me, not the whole idea, but at least in the beginning was to make for less frequent injection. We have undecanoate now, which which leaves you even more time in between because it takes the body even longer to break up those 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 bonds, right? So the the, the, the sub Q injection, I get it. You have fewer spikes along the way, and I'm not saying don't do it. If I mean, hey, it's all about whatever works for you. Yeah. And if you don't mind doing that every day and it's better for you than putting on a sticky cream, go for it. It's just I have to address the theory behind it because a lot of people skip that part. Again, if it works better, that's a whole other thing we're talking about here. Is it thick, though, to get that in that teeny tiny size? Well, it's very difficult. I mean, I, I don't know anybody. I, I don't have the patience to try and oh pull it God, into a... 31 gauge needle, I don't know, and I use, I recommend using, you know, grapeseed oil in, in testosterone esters because it's a little less viscous than sesame or, or cotton, yeah. but I think you'd be there all day trying to pull oh it in a 31. God, yeah. Now, you could take a 1cc syringe and attach a 20 gauge needle, pull in what you need, then remove it and put in yeah. a, you're going to be wasting a lot, um, uh, but you could do it, and then boom, you throw it in, uh, you know, underneath the skin. The problems I have seen not all, not across the board. Some people go, dude, this is great. I love it, doc. But every once in a while, I'll see somebody that gets a huge lump or more. It's thick. And yeah. and, and and almost, um, you know, like with guys that use uh, a lot of propionate, especially if it's bootleg and it's yeah. got, you know, a baker's dozen of uh, benzoyl benzoate in it, you get flu-like symptoms. But even if it's straight from the pharmacy, that's the thing I tell people. You really sure you really want to use propionate? You know, yeah. I try and... Distill, dis dispel the whole, you know, gym science rumors about how it's going to hold less water and blah, blah. It just means more injections. But you can get flu-like symptoms. People come in and they have, um, I've seen them, uh, not only huge knots, but, you know, just short of having cellulitis. And we got to drain it out oh, or we got to put them on antibiotics. Well, I'm not saying, maybe they did it wrongly. Yeah. I don't know. But I don't think there's enough evidence there there's, in terms of studies to suggest that it's the way to go. So I can't say, hey... I endorse it, but yeah. again, I'm not the end-all be-all. If guys are doing it and saying, hey, Rando, this works way better for me than the intramuscular injection, who am I to say it doesn't? Mm -hmm. I can't say, oh, well, you're going to harm yourself. The only thing I bring up is that I have seen some, yeah. some of those injections go awry. Um, and again, more often than not, as, as in my clinical experience, I have seen people have a problem when they mix aqueous with oil base. Um, yeah. but maybe that'll work differently. I can't imagine why it would subcutaneously. So I hope that's a, a, a good enough answer. Yeah. His, his question was about HCG, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. What about GH? Just, just as a, is it also, uh, can you do it intramuscular? Does it work just as well? Or is it better to do a, you sub, know, sub um, I don't know of any studies that show using HGH intramuscularly, uh, act any differently. Okay. Uh, I would think it will work just the same. Okay. Uh, because remember, the, the, the growth hormone is only, only in your system for 30 minutes before it converts to IGF-1, right? Gotcha. So what does it matter if it goes intramuscularly or uh, subcutaneously? Now, with somorolin, okay, yeah. there's definitely a problem with acetate. If you, try, <laughs> if you try and do it anything other than subcutaneously, have you ever taken, you know, 1,000 milligrams of niacin after not taking it for a while? You know that flush you get? Yeah. 
Okay, it'll just about knock you on your butt. Okay, you definitely don't want to use samorolin that way. Okay. Uh, which is a, a, a growth hormone releasing hormone analog. Right. Um, I know that with growth hormone intramuscularly, I've never heard of or seen that reaction take place. Uh, I think the main reason behind the protocol is that people in general don't like giving themselves needles. Right. Okay. And so the idea of just using a little teeny insulin needle and being able to put it underneath the skin yeah. is much more appealing. Less invasive. Uh, yeah. Uh, but in my opinion, my humble opinion, yeah. from what I've seen, most of the, well, first of all, most of the pain is mental. But whether you stick yourself with uh, an intramuscular injection or subcutaneous injection, it's the needle passing through the skin that hurts. So whether you do it this way yeah. or this way, <laughs> yeah. going through the skin, it, it hurts. Yeah. So, you know, uh, but there are some definite protocols you want to pay attention to. There are times when you don't have a choice and don't want to go intramuscular, only subcutaneous. And there's times you could do either one. With HCG, again, to answer the question, sorry, yeah. Yeah. you can do intramuscular or subcutaneous. Doesn't awesome. matter. Awesome.